So a little while back, I put a video out called Why Cheetah Hunt is my new number one. And it was met with, let's just say, mixed reception? Yeah, that, that's a good way of putting it. In this video, I explained why Cheetah Hunt was my new favorite coaster, but it wasn't for typical reasoning, more like a feeling. If you want to know more about that, then just check out the video. But this video is going to be explaining why Cheetah Hunt was just dethroned. And it was dethroned by none other than Steel Vengeance. So you heard me right, now I'm a basic bitch. Sorry. I actually think it's almost poetic that the ride that initially blew up my channel is now my new favorite. That's really one of the big reasons I wanted to go to Cedar Point. That and the reason that it's friggin' Cedar Point. I mean, look at it. But I got seven rides in this thing and all seven blew my socks off. So in this video, I'm going to explain why this ride is my favorite for the 1% of people that still haven't ridden it. So this is going to be another layout breakdown type video for the world's best roller coaster. Now this video isn't the most exciting, but you know what? You, you guys get a huge video next week, so don't get upset. It's one of my biggest projects yet up there with the Florida thing. Anyways, so let's get cracking with the layout. You start with these small little bunny hops that are a great way to set the tone of the ride airtime if you don't like airtime then this ride is just not for you i'm sorry this is literally the ride with the most airtime on any coaster on the planet like you're actually out of your seat for longer than you're in it these bunny hops don't really give you anything but i do appreciate a little pre-lift because like i said in my sequencing video this doesn't need to be here at all but it's just there I, I don't know it's like little touches like these that makes me really like this ride then there's the incredibly loud lift hill that's almost a meme in the park itself the ride crew kept making jokes about how loud the lift was when they were trying to talk over it and tell us not to push down our our lap bars. Just want to say, I really like the crew for this ride. One of the ride ops let us re-ride once because there was no one in the row, but also the ride broke down once while we were at the air gates in the station, and one of the ride ops started playing Cedar Point trivia. He talked about how Zadra might be better than Steve, how Mean Streak was the best coaster at Cedar Point, and how Maverick's drop is inferior to Steve's because it's a hundred feet shorter. Another thing, though, I want to mention about this entire park is that a little competition ride ops have with each other. Like they'll always drop sly remarks about how one ride is better than the other. Like when we pulled into the station for any force cheering and when the ride-ups go we don't get that at steel engines or that little maverick remark at cedar point trivia or when the ride ops dispatching maverick tell us to enjoy our rides in the first and superior coaster in frontier town it's just little stuff like that that makes me love this park but that's for another video next week's video anyways back on track there are these lanterns that line the lift and let me tell you at night these lanterns each get swarmed with bugs it's honestly kind of funny because i got all seven rides on the right side my friend was on the left so he would always have to contort his body away so he didn't get swallowed alive by the small militia of bugs and then you crest over the first drop and goddamn what a drop 200 feet and 90 degrees <laughs> There are only a couple of drops that warrant a back row ride for me, and this is one of them. The other ones are Skyrush, Toro, and Maverick, and Steel Vengeance breaks strongly into that group. You're blasting off like freaking Team Rocket all the way down, and as soon as you level out, you hit a speed hill and go into the craziest part of the ride. Personally, this is my favorite element on the entire thing. The top hat. This top hat just gives just as strong, if not stronger, airtime as the outer bank, but it's also A, larger, and B, has a super intense snap of laterals. You also take this at a faster speed because it's right after the drop. The laterals are also so high up when you get whipped over, and it just makes for an incredible element and probably my favorite on any coaster. Then you drop down and run as your butt lands on the seat, you're already back up for the famous outer bank. Here's the thing, I've talked my shit on this thing before saying how I didn't think it was going to be good and whatever, but yeah, no guys, this thing is actually a masterpiece. You are out of your seat for a good five seconds straight and being on your side is just such a bizarre but genius move i really can't stress how good these first three elements are all back to back my favorite is the top hat but the other two are probably still two of my favorite coaster elements out there then you pop up into this zero g roll that keeps going on forever this is easily my favorite inversion on the ride hot take i don't really care about the last two in the structure but this first one is probably my favorite inversion on any coaster this is always where i put my hands down because all of the hand choppers with the supports when you're going upside down but when you finally twist out out, you go into this amazing wave turn stangle dive I, I don't even know what to call it it's just it might even just be a bank turn but rmc managed to put airtime on it then you pop up for this quick pop of air and then plummet into the snake dive thingy i was expecting not to really care about the element, but it's actually pretty fun i really enjoyed it it's almost like a fake out you'd think it'd be a super abrupt snap and just kind of uncomfortable but no it's fairly smooth you keep going through that transition and it's just fun it gives pretty good lateral hang time and like i've been saying this entire time it really feels like you're gonna fall out lateral hang time is the king pin of that feels like you're gonna fall out feeling and it does this perfectly and then you drop down into this little ditch right here and this little drop down is so much stronger than it looks like in the pov like honestly this is one of my favorite airtime moments on the ride maybe because i was coming out of inversion in a relatively airtime free section but still it was a really strong moment that caught me off guard every time but of course that was just in preparation for these two massive pop-ups into the brakes and yes these things just send you to the moon. You will fly into your restraint on these every time, and it's pure 
pure bliss. The first two is the stronger one, but the second one you're twisting more, so they really both do deliver just different types of strong airtime. And it's the perfect way to cap off this perfect first half. Hot take, or I don't know how hot this is, but this first half is my favorite part of Steel Vengeance. I know a lot of people say the second half is better, but no. For me, I like the first half better. But the second half is still great, and it starts with this mid-course. This mid-course usually doesn't slow you down, but it gives you a chance to breathe. Now, on a lot of coasters, a chance to breathe is a bad thing, but on this one, you actually really do need it. And besides, you're still going at a pretty fast pace through that mid-course. That The quote-unquote chance to breathe is more like a chance where my friend would turn to me and say, why the f*** is it going so fast? And then you plunge to your doom again and let me say what a plunge that is. I feel like I keep saying this, but you get yanked from your seat for a solid three seconds. You know how with dive coasters, you have that first drop, and then there's that second drop that's kind of just like a smaller version of the first drop? Well, that's basically this. It's a smaller version of Steve's first drop. It's super strong, just like the first drop, and has the same wow factor. It also has a good dose of that stomach dropping feeling, which is a big surprise, but certainly a welcome one. It's a great way to kick off the second half and definitely one of the best moments on the ride. I feel like I keep saying that. There can't be this many best moments of the ride. That's just not how it physically works. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't help it. This is just the best ride. But after this, you go up into this double up, and these two hills are just really solid. I wouldn't say they're like standout moments on the ride because everything else on the ride is just so good, but I do really enjoy these hills. It's no knock against them. Everything else is just a godsend of elements, and these are just normal, very good RMC hills. But they're sandwiched in between two of the strongest moments of the ride. First, there's that dive off the mid course, and then there's the famous off axis hill. And let me tell you, what a hill. This is probably the single strongest pull you get in the ride. And obviously it's not sustained as the top hat or the outer bank and your restraint has come down a little bit, but it's about the strength of Maverick's hill. And if you've been on that, you would know that that hill is really something else. Though I don't know why you would have ridden Maverick, but not Seal Vengeance, uh, whatever, moving on. And the fact that you start one way and end in the other and you dive into the inner structure just makes it so much better. But this is where that inner structure adventure begins. You go through this high bank turn and normally I wouldn't care about this, but this is the first element with all those supports flying around you and your sense of speed and direction is just all out of whack that this ends up being a pretty fun element. And after that, you go into the third inversion. This is a zero G roll and this zero G roll is pretty fun. There's something so smooth about it. And again, you really do feel like you're going to whack a support. Inverting while being surrounded by all this wood is really just something else. But like I said before, it's not as good as the first two inversions, but that's no knock against it. It's still pretty okay. Then there's two solid pops of airtime before you dive back into the structure for a wave turn. This was my first proper wave turn if you're not counting that super high off the ground one earlier. And let me tell you, sideways airtime is quite the phenomenon. It's nothing crazy, like it's just floater, but being on your side and again, surrounded by wood just elevates it to a pretty memorable element, even though in the POV, it looks like a throwaway one. Then you go through the last zero G roll, which for some reason, I never really enjoyed that much. I don't know why, like it wasn't bad. I just wasn't feeling this one like the other inversions. It's still fun and yet again, cool to fly through the structure, but there's just something about it that just doesn't hit like the other ones. Still a good element, but I would have rather had something else, maybe like a super low to the ground zero G stall, but that logistically wouldn't make any sense in our you would never do that and this was probably just way easier to build but I don't know. That's probably the only con I can think of of this ride. But even that, it's a pretty weak con because this ride is just perfect. Then you slam into this overbank with a super aggressive jolt of laterals and enter the finale of six back-to-back -back airtime hills. These airtime hills are actually all pretty average, but having six back-to-back -back with virtually no breaks in between is the perfect way to end this ride. The first one is banked outwards and the rest are at different heights and have different amount of times in between them. And it really just is an unpredictable mess of perfection. And that ends your ride on the world's best coaster. Personally, I don't think there is another coaster that will top it for me and it kind of sucks that this is my first rmc because in comparison all the other ones kind of just don't excite me anymore like i was looking at wicked cycle and off ride and just comparing it to the different elements on steve and it kind of looked a little slow i love steve so much and even though i got seven rides in it in the course of two days i still wish i could have gotten more it's sad that i'll probably never likely ride this again but the rides i did get on were among the best on any coaster i had so thank you all for watching this very basic coaster video and look out for next week's video because trust me it's gonna be a banger and go out and ride steve I'll see you all next week.